What we're doing right now is called a resting metabolic rate test to measure resting metabolism. The purpose of this test is to be, be able to give guidance to nutritional information that doesn't cause nutritional deficiencies. So there are so many people today with attempts to want to exercise to be healthy aren't eating the value of calories just to meet resting rate, much less expenditures. So they end up failing in their ability to improve their met per minute. This is just another avenue of testing to bring credibility to why we need to eat this many calories and at the same time what percent of those calories come from carbs, proteins, and fats. Okay. What we're doing right now is a VO2 peak test and this is a test that measures the efficiency of the delivery and muscular system's ability to deliver oxygen and at the same time the muscles consume it. The reason it's called a VO2 peak is we're working up to the point where the respiratory quotient is 1-0, which is the doorway of anaerobic metabolism. This is the point where the athlete's ability to use fat for energy complete, completely stops. In one minute, Nate, you're at 8.8 .8 milliliters. You're at a respiratory quotient 0 0.65. We've got a heart rate of 84. We've got a 3.6 calorie utilization of fat. That's 100%. He's burning 3.6 calories a minute. 100% fat. I'm going to let you know at four minutes where he's at. But it's good mentally, you know. Thirty-one five, Nate. You're steadily going up. And, and just like uh, Sarah, we tell the view. Yeah. Just level. Just level. That's, that's right. right. Do it. We're putting more demand on him, but he's still using fat. Where the unfit person just starts using sugar like crazy. Then, then blood sugar plummets, and they get tired and say, "Ooh, that's enough today." Why did I stop bringing that? I got it all written down. 32.8, you're steadily, 33.8, you're steadily going up. Look at all that space thing. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Look up, Nate, look up. That I do. And just keep trying it, but we might even hurt your back. Run tall. Yeah, that's right. Got it. That's it. I got it. I can fall, fall off. off. Yeah, you're looking good, big man. Yeah, I can fall off. You're looking good. I do 42, but I'm using 20% of that. See, that's the difference in the individual. And you can train that to be different. Forty-six two. When we see this high of a score, we, we usually see lack of threshold just done. But now he's he's twenty points away from the lack of threshold. He's at fifty nine. Oh, this, if I wanted points. to bet who's got a chance to go the longest race, the fastest, I'm betting on this guy. Yeah. Right. 59. 59. 59 milliliters. He's getting ready to break 60. Get that left arm working. He's doing nothing. The whole left side. 60.3. 60.3. Is he going to beat Chris? 60.4. Start Nate, <laughs> you're doing it, baby. Drive your knees up a little bit more, too. Start to use that part of your body. Get to the, you know. 61.4. You're 0.88, Nate. You're looking good, baby. You're looking really good. Yeah. You look good. Yeah. 
You're 10 points away, Nate. You're 10 points away. 63. Yes. Sixty-three-seven. Stay up, there, baby. Hang in there, Nate. You're almost done, baby. You're looking good, Nate. Better be safe than sorry. But he, but here's the thing: zero nine six. We still have parameters that that they, they say that you training much higher than this one seventy five heart rate is going to cause the sprint times to get worse. So so, uh, so you have to balance the training. Yeah. We have to have some speed work. We have to have some steady rate. But then yeah. the steady rate's got to be done near lactic threshold for, you. for you to keep getting keep better. better. But, but by no means, I mean, you got one of the highest scores we tested. And again, with, with that score, you can see you had a high rate of fat being used for energy. So people who are overweight yeah. need to be able to understand what we have to do to cause physiological change to be able to use fat effectively. And my, my Okay, we've got the results back now from Virginia Runner, and looking at Clay, Greg, and Nate, we've got some differences in their aerobic strength and some differences in things that are going to be relative to them training. An example, Clay tested out at 57.2 milliliters, and he reached his lactic threshold at a heart rate of 189. Greg tested out at 48 milliliters, and reached his lactic threshold at 186. Nate tested out at 65.6 milliliters, the highest score, and his lactic threshold heart rate was 175. Now if you look at the age predicted formulas that would be given out for prescription to aerobic work, they all exceeded the work capacity of the formula. And, and what this means is if they can train with higher heart rates without the production of lactic acid, all that can do is improve cardiac output. So again, we shouldn't be using formulas when we can train exact. A, a very interesting characteristic that I'm going to show compared to Nate versus Greg is Nate, when he was at a heart rate of 128, he was us utilizing 26 milliliters 0.3, that's how much oxygen utilization he, he was at, 26.3, at a heart rate of 128, and he was burning 7.5 calories from fat. Now that utilization of fat at, at that heart rate for that oxygen cost was 100%. His body has the ability at that oxygen utilization to still use a high rate of fat for energy. Now compare that to Greg, who was at 30 milliliters, which is 4 milliliters more, Greg's heart was 156 beats a minute. Greg was burning 9.7 calories out of 13 total calories. Now again, when you look at Nate going to 39 milliliters, his heart rate was 142. And even at 39 milliliters, he was burning 10.5 calories from fat, which his total calories were 10.5. Now, comparing those two, it shows that Nate's way more efficient in his body's ability to use fat and to use fat at higher training rates. So, so again, one of the goals of long-term long, um, endurance is to train the muscle to be more fuel efficient at using fat for energy, which spares muscle glycogen. So if you've got two people running the same distance, even if they're using the same amount of oxygen, it doesn't mean that they're, they're using the same amount of fat. Can you train people that can learn to be more efficient at using fat by exercise prescription? Of course you can. And this is the whole reason for the testing, is to say in a yearly program, how do we set up the program based on you as a unique, unique individual that can teach your body through physiological change to be better at using more fat at higher and higher running speeds? And that's everything about program design. So the best runners that have the highest VO2 steady rate, they have the most glycogen left at the end of the race. And it's, it's only because their body's more efficient at using fat for energy.